Okay, let's talk about the Azure Data Factory mapping data flow alter row transformation today. So I have a source in the sink of my data flow, and my source of data is the movie uh, database as a CSV export. So the projection of the physical file looks like this. I have the movie title, genre, the year, the rating, the Rotten Tomato, and then I have the data types for those. These data types were uh, created through the detect data type option in the source in data flows. All I'm going to do here is I'm not even going to use the alter data of the alter row. The alter row is right here under row modifier. Instead, I'm just going to sync the data. So what I want to show you in the sync is that there are four options. Uh, this, these options will only appear on the database style of data sets. These are not valid for file types because this is actually working with transactions. And so I'm going to, uh, I have the option of the allow insert, delete, upsert. So the insert or update in one command and then the update. And then in addition to that, I can uh, I have these different options for what to do with the table. I can, uh, if I need to change the shape of the destination table or the schema, I can use recreate table. Or if I just want to make sure that I wipe out the data before I load it, I can say truncate table. Now be aware that these options are permanent on your target table, so be, ca be careful with these. So the caution in this is that the truncate table will remove all the rows, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset my table using the, trun the truncate table. So my data set is an Azure SQL data set. It's called Movies with Ratings, and that actually points to a table that I have here on my Azure SQL database, and this is the table here. So I currently have uh, 9,125 rows in it, and this is a look at the data uh, that is ordered by the year that it was uh, that the um, movie was created or released, or I guess it would probably be the release date. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset my data from the source, from the CSV source, and to reset it, I'm going to truncate. So the truncate option under settings in the sync will remove all the data and then it will insert all the rows. All right, so let's just take a look at the data preview and we'll see uh, what the data is going to look like. And essentially, it's going to look like what I have in there now. I'm just demonstrating to you here how to use these options in the sync. These sync options are very important to understand when you are working with alter row. So this is why I wanted to show this to you now. Now look at um, the, oh, I'm on the data preview for the sync because I wanted to look, look at the data to demonstrate what it's going to look like when it comes into the database from the CSV. Notice that each row has a uh, marker on it for what profile, what profile we are using. And these match up with the inserts. So we're not updating, deleting, upsetting. These are not lookup results. These are all inserts you can tell from the icon here. Okay, so now uh, when we do that, we will have these new rows in the database table. Now, I'm in the debug mode here in building and designing my data flow. Make sure you have the data flow debug switch on so that you can preview the data like this. Additionally, it's very important to have the data flow debug switch on because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to my pipeline. Notice how I'm in debug and data preview here in uh, data flow and these rows are not being updated. The data, the table is not being truncated. The sync and these policies are essentially not being honored during debug. I have to go into the pipeline to actually execute my data flow for those things to take effect. So I have in, in my pipeline, I have uh, a data flow, execute data flow activity. That is the alter rows data flow that we are building now. And I'm going to execute that. To execute, I'm going to click debug here on the pipeline. So the pipeline debug will do a complete end-to-end -end execution of your data flow, and you'll be able to view the status down here. And with the eyeglasses, you'll be able to see the execution plan when it's finished, so you can see how long each step took, how many rows were transformed, how many partitions were used, were utilized, and all that information will be available to you. So you can see right now that it is running, it is yellow, and what's going to happen is this will now get pushed out to the database. So when I'm here in, in design and debug, it does not get pushed to the database. When I'm in the pipeline and I use debug, it will go to the database and it will use my debug session because I have my data flow debug switch on. So we can verify all this by going over to the query editor. We can um, uh, run our search. We should have 9,125 rows from that uh, source file. And our data should look really essentially the same as it was before because I really didn't do any updates to it before this demo. Now what I do want to show you in the data is that we do have three bad rows. And I'm going to delete these from the uh, destination database by looking for any year that is less than 1900. So I don't want any, you know, I don't even know if there were movies that were um, in this database that are 
um, that were released before 1900. But I'll just use that as the number to get rid of this uh, bad negative row. And I'll also use that by checking to see if year is null. If it is null, then we can get rid of these two uh, rows here. So back in my um, data factory, you can see that my pipeline run is successful. I can look at the details of it here. Very simple. There's those 9,125 rows. And then I can go back now to the rest of the demo for the data flow. So now that we have the data in the database, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually switch my source data set to that same database. So this shows you how you can use alter row within data factory and data flows to uh, be able to update the tables in your database directly here with alter row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just take a look at the projection, make sure everything is correct. It is. Those are the types from the uh, table. Now I'm going to add an alter row and let's use the alter row to remove that bad data directly from that database. So I'll set a condition for my delete. So I'll say delete if and like I said the formula is going to be the year as the indicator. So I'm going to say if the year is less than 1900 or oops or the year is null, so I'll say is null year. Okay, that looks good. Now we can test this here um, by hitting refresh right here. Now, when you are building conditions in filters or um, as well as alter row conditions within Dataflow, uh, the preview, the data preview, you will see that you get a check uh, check mark by any row that matches that condition or X if that row does not match that condition. That looks about right to me. So now here's where you want to be careful on the sync. I don't want to allow inserts. If I say allow inserts, we're going to essentially duplicate every row in that table. I only want to allow deletes. So the table action is going to be none. I no longer want to truncate the table. I'm going to leave the table as is. I want to leave that data there, leave the data in place and only delete the rows I want to delete. So my key column is going to be movie, which is exactly right. Now this will delete any row that matches these conditions. And you can see that also on the alter row data preview will have, will show you the profile matching for the conditions that you've set for those rows will come up here in the data preview. So now this row, as well as the ones that are null are going to be set for deletion. So if I go to sync, I can say allow delete, do not allow insert, nothing else. This is just going to be a simple delete data flow. Okay, this looks good. Let's validate. Make sure everything's right. It is. Now we can go back to our, let me save this guy. Now we can go back to our pipeline. We can execute this again. So again, debug with your data flow debug on from the pipeline will execute end to end, including the database actions. So let's go over to our uh, database preview. Uh, I'm sorry, database preview. Our, um, our query tool here in Azure and let's look now at the count first of all. So the count should be three fewer rows. So it was 9,125. We're going to clobber these three rows because these are bad data. And let's run and let's see what we get. And 9,122 is our return. So that looks right. And let's make sure that bad data is gone. And there you go. So we in place uh, updated um, our database. We essentially cleaned our database here with the data flow. So let's go back to our data factory. Now the preview, uh, I keep saying preview. Well, I guess this kind of is a preview, right? Essentially the debug run of our pipeline is showing it's still running. It's probably just doing some cleanup, but it's done now. And then now we can see that uh, this executed with the alter row. Everything was completed in one partition for us and it took about seven seconds to run that. Okay, so we can close this. So that's deletes and alter row. Now let's do an update. Okay, so for the update, let's do this. The data has containing in it, so when we look at the, um, all of the, oops, that's not the one I wanted to do. If we look at all of the uh, rows within this data set, I am having some trouble with my, there we go. In the data set, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, I noticed, is um, a movie that was redone a couple of times early on in the history of uh, Hollywood. And so if we look specifically for that title, so let's do a, um, Select star from movies with ratings. And let's say where title is equal to, let me actually get the exact title. So I don't want to do a like, we'll just do the exact. We'll just paste that in here. And uh, that's fine, that's good enough. Let's go ahead and run that guy. Uh, 
So you see we have the one, the movie from 1915, the movie from 1953. So what I want to, oh, I see it. This thing keeps doing that. That's weird. So what I want to do to make this a little bit clearer is I want to add the year to these two, um, to these two movies on the title. So I know when I'm looking at it, that these are two different movies and which one is which, because they have very different ratings. The 1953 version has a rating of one and the 1915 version has a rating of nine. All right. So the way that we do that with alter row in data flow is to go into the alter row and we can leave the, um, uh, we can leave the delete condition in there if you want to. That's fine. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off delete on the sink. But of course this would just pass through anyway, because this is going to have a, this is going to be a Boolean false all the time because nothing will match that criteria anymore. So it's fine. We'll leave it there. So you do this all in one single transform. It's fine. Let's do an update. So we're going to update only if the title is 20,000 leaks. Just like so. And we can even refresh just to make sure that our um, criteria is correct in the expression. And it looks like we don't match those, but we match 20,000 leaks. That looks right. Okay, save and finish. Now, to update then that row, so once everything matches, it's going to update. Um, we've set the um, we set the profiles for update for those rows. Now, how do we update the data within those rows, the other columns? You use the draft column. So what we'll do is we're going to update the title. So we'll just update it in place. And I said I wanted to add the year to it. So I'm going to say title plus uh, space left paren plus two string the year. And there we go. So that should do it. So we can test this out here in our expression editor. But I want you to be aware of something is that um, this will show you the results of a derived column of adding, of changing this title this way with adding the year to it for every single row. But all we really want is we only want 20,000 leagues under the seat. But that's fine because this looks fine. This is adding the year. These look great. It's not going to do that for the others because I've set the policy to only make that update to. 20,000 leaks under the seat. So in the sync, you take off delete. We already did that. And we just say allow update. My key column is movie for, as it was from before. And even in the data preview, if you just want to, again, just be careful with these sort of operations, go ahead and check to make sure that those are the only rows that will get an updated title so we don't mess up all the other titles, just the 20,000 leaks under the seat. We can verify that in the data preview. And I was on the wrong transform when I did that. I meant to do that here from the alter row transform. You're not going to see that from the sync. So let's refresh. So the alter row will have the policy indicator next to it. And okay, there we go. Perfect. So there it is. That is the row being updated. Alrighty. Now let's validate. Everything looks great. Let's save it. And then back in the pipeline, we can now run it from debug. Remember those debug runs I just did from the debug mode within data flow designer. Do not execute the database functions. I have to be in the pipeline debug in order to uh, test and execute my end to end. Now I don't have to run this from a pipeline trigger. I can just run it from debug and debug. will use the active debug cluster. So that's very fast. All right, so let's go ahead and see our data on the query editor. And we're going to look just for 20,000 leagues. And we should now see the columns with the uh, the rows now with the updated title. But of course, we don't because I changed the title. So the equals is not going to work. So we'll just say like. And I'll put a percent at the end of that so we can capture both of those rows with the new column names. And I think I have to do it this way. I have to do it twice to get it to work. Do this, that, and that. There we go. So now we see the years associated with, attached to those. And let's see if we messed up all the other rows. This should be clean. Fingers crossed. Yep, everything looks good except for 20,000 leagues, which has the do it once, do this, do this, and boom. So there, there's 20,000 leagues with the um, year and the others don't have it. All right, so that's a quick look at how to use Altero and Agent Factory's mapping data flow.